Hi everybody and welcome to the next tutorial. My name is Alex and now I would like to introduce you to the new tutorial. So we want to scrape data from ASOS.com. It's a fashion retailer and what we want to do is we want to focus on the sale for men. Okay, so if you hover over with the mouse to this sale tab, click on best of sale. Okay, and now we want to scrape the sale data. Okay. So before we start, I've again prepared this Jupyter Notebook. It will be again our IDE. And here it's blank, except the fact that I've already provided the headings. So we know step by step what we need to do. Okay. And this four data points we want actually to focus on and to scrape. So we have the name, we have the brand, the current price and the previous price. I mean, this makes sense because we want to compare the old price with the new price because we want to scrape the sale data okay this is it again we want to use selenium no beautiful soup we want to focus on the api which is behind asus.com okay now again let's open the website and let's take a look how to get access to this data using the website's hidden api okay right click inspect and now go to the network tab and now you see here that directly we have one response. Let's see if this is helpful. And let's take a look. No, it's not helpful at all. We don't have any product information except the hex color or something. But for now, this is actually not useful at all. Let's scroll down. Let's see what happens here. Okay, the next two requests appear. But again, no, um, no relevant product information. So let's scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Doo -doo -doo. And here you see that now we need to click on load more to be able to get access to the second page. And make sure you remember this 72. This is actually important. And in this example, we have 72 items inside the first result page. Now I want to clear all these requests. So click on clear and then click on load more and now directly two um, yeah, results appear or at least this two requests so here I want to click on the first one and now this looks better so here inside the products key we have actually the data for the second page okay and we have the brand name we have the name and we also have the price information and this is actually great okay this is actually what we want to have but again this is the result for the second page let's take a look how to manage the access to the first one now right click here on this request click on copy copy as curl okay then you need to again or let me just start from the beginning so let's search for a curl converter okay so I will remove it, curl converter, paste it here. Let's choose the first one. Again, here we have just copied the curl. Okay, it's this one, we have copied this. And actually with the curl, you can run, you can actually run this curl inside your CMD, yeah, to make a request to this website. But what we need to do is we need to convert this curl command to a python request because we want to make the exact same request which you see here inside this website okay with the header for example request url request method status code and so on here we have the response and here we have the preview of the data we want to recreate this whole request inside our notebook okay or we want to make a python request and this is why we need to copy the curl command and search for a curl converter in order to be able to convert our curl command to a python request okay this is actually the whole logic behind it here i've pasted what i've copied here okay right click copy copy as curl then paste it here and we have directly access to the python request this is actually the logic behind it now i want to highlight everything copy that 
back to our notebook okay and in the next step i want to paste it here this is actually it and now as you can remember this is the result for the second page actually i can show you directly how to modify it to get access to the first page but i want to do this step by step with you guys okay right now again this is the request for page number two let's go back and let's see how this api is actually behaving so as you as you have seen we didn't have the chance to get the request for the first page but for the second page okay and now let's scroll down again and copy the request for the third page okay and this is actually also very important when we work with multiple pages which also will be part of this tutorial so now this is the end of page number two i want to clean up everything then click on load more and here right now we have the request for page number three okay again make sure you are inside the network tab and then click again right click copy copy as curl okay back to our converter replace the old stuff with the new values and here we have the python request for page number three okay copy that go back to our notebook and you can just paste it underneath now it's just time to understand the whole logic so again almost always you have to concentrate on these parameters so we have this request it's consisting of this headers then we have the parameters and the request which is stored inside the response variable okay so this is it and now again this is the request for page number two so now take a close look to this offset parameter here we have number 72 okay and you can remember we also had 72 items for each page okay next in the third request the offset is 144 that means the logic behind it is 72 plus 72 is 144 okay so what about the first page maybe the logic can be that we start with zero then plus 72 is 72 right makes sense and then plus 72 we have 144 let's try it out okay so now this for example a demonstration how to get access to the request of the first page even without directly copying the request for the first page okay this is actually the whole concept behind it now i want to remove the request for page number three is not necessary again we just see the request for page number two and i want to replace 72 with a zero and let's see if it works okay if it doesn't we still can um, try to find another solution but for now let's go ahead and see if our logic makes sense so offset i replace 72 with a zero and actually i want to have the requests in the first cell let's do this all our imports should be here at least i want to do it like this and i also want to import the pandas library as pd and pd is our abbreviation or the alias for the pandas okay so let's run this one then i want to run the python request okay we don't see an error message this is fine and we also can get rid of this comment here it's not necessary and now this looks fine in the next step what we need to do is we need to check the status code that means here this request was stored inside this response variable we just need to type in response and let's take a look we have a 200 and 200 always means that we have successfully created or sent an http request to this website and this is actually yeah what you want to have here okay so next we need to create our json object okay and 
you just need to refer to this response variable dot json okay run the cell and now you see that this is actually um, the json object for this website okay now we need to deal with dictionary so it's key and value pairs and in the next step what we have to do is i want to store this json object inside a variable let's say results underscore json okay it's this one and now i want to be given out all the key elements or oh, sorry all the keys of this json object why because here inside this website i know that here if i see this preview okay i want to see what keys i actually can use to get the data here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven different keys let's see how many we get out here so results underscore json dot keys and here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven okay so you can see here this amount of keys is matching actually what you see here and this is what we need to have now since we know that our products are inside this products key okay i need to get access to the products key it's this one okay this looks actually good and i want to proceed underneath this step here step number six that means i have the results underscore json and here i want to make you make a use of the products key okay this is actually it okay and if we make use of this one you see that here we have all our items our results from zero until 71 that means all in all we have 72 results and we also can make a cross check so length of this one is 72 and this is actually the proof that with this simple modification right now we have access to the request of the first page okay but what i want to do is i want to store this expression inside this variable so result underscore items okay and if you want to you can run this length function again so length result items and it's 72 okay so now in the first step let's go ahead and output our data for the first result then we want to do this for all 72 results inside the first page and then we want to work with multiple pages okay so this tutorial should consist actually of three different steps or three different parts okay so let's target the first result so since we have here a list of 72 results we simply can use the index number zero in order to get access to the first product okay now let's go back to the website let's scroll up all the way okay let's scroll up and you see here the very first result is this vans opposite color black t-shirt in cream let's take a look and the name is exactly the same right vans opposite color uh, sorry color block not color black color block t-shirt in cream and this is actually so this is actually our ultimative proof that this short modification inside this request gave us the uh, opportunity or the um the chance to get access to the data of the first page okay that's it so now let's go ahead i think i already talked enough <laughs> or a lot so now let's go ahead and grab the necessary data so we start with the name and here this is actually our starting point okay result items zero and here i want to get access to this name key here this one let's run it and voila now we have successfully got access to this name second one is the brand let's take a look how to get access to the brand let's just copy again the first item 
paste it here around the cell and let's take a look now this brand name key we want to have okay so copy that one and here let's provide this brackets and this quotes and inside this quotes i want to paste the brand name this is vance this is also correct next one we want to have the current price and the old price that means here i want to copy this expression and before i paste it i want to make one comment it's the current price okay let's run it and now we see that our price information is actually stored inside this price key okay now first of all we need to make x or to get access to the price key okay and then we have current and previous first of all we want to have the current one okay so it's current and now we can choose between this value or this text element and actually i want to grab this one because here i also have this pound symbol okay so let's make use of this text okay so run it and this looks actually fine so the same we need to do or almost the same for the old price so copy this expression or this part of the expression paste it here and don't forget to comment it so it's the old price now let's run it and now we need to get access to this previous key okay so it's previous and again let's make use of this text because here again we have the pound symbol okay so let's make a cross check the old price was 20 the current price is 11 voila this is fine so i make it a little bit larger so here 20 is sorry so i think it's too large never mind so here we have 20 pounds is the old price and the new price is 11 pounds okay so this is actually fine and with this simple um, expressions right now we have the possibility to grab the name the brand the current price and the old price but this was actually a demonstration for just one product okay and i want to make a cut here and in the next part of the tutorial we want to get access or to grab the data for all 72 products inside the first page. Okay, so stay tuned and I see you in the next part.